Ah, oh, but seriously, folks. <laughs> oh, how you doing? I'm actually just, um, I'm, what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to warm up for, to record a drum part, a drum track for a song that I'm recording. So up until now, um, usually in a small studio like this, whoops, I should close my freezer. Um, in a small place like this, usually you would be, you'd be forced to be using a drum machine where you would actually be programming the beats on a keyboard and uh, putting it together that way. But I decided this time, since I had extra space now, thanks to the way I've got this set up, is um, actually um, use this uh, drum pad here. Just the only part of it that I'm not using is the hi-hats, which kind of sucks. So I've got my own hi-hats here and their micro the microphone is there and it's hooked up to the computer and so is this. So I'm triggering drum sounds on the computer plus the hi-hats here um, and it's working out pretty well. So within the next few couple months there'll be a, a song coming out. It's not a new song but it's um, an old one that I did years ago that never got a, a decent chance at being recorded properly. So I'm going to give my best chance at doing that. I've got a friend who plays guitar. Like, I mean, he plays guitar. He really plays guitar. I mean, he's the real deal. And uh, he lives just down the street, so he's agreed to do the guitar parts for me. And it's a bit of a heavier song, so it'll be kind of cool. Anyway, that's not homebrew related. Happy homebrew weekday. My name's Craig, and welcome. I have this in my hand because I have a very special beer to taste right now. It's special to me. Um, this was brewed by um, a fellow fairly local home brewer. Sort of local. Local enough that he has these dropped off to me once in a while. And this is JMCM LXX. That's his name on the 17 Brewers. Name's J, so there you go. But yeah, so he had these dropped off. There was four of them. One of them I already drank. It's, it was a double-fisted ale. And there's three others. This one and two others that are in the freezer. One's a, a sort of a, an apple mead, and the other one is a, um, a special beer that I'll be doing um, a re separate review on on another video very soon. Okay, but this is Jay's second all-grain attempt. Now, this has been refrigerated. It looks like my refrigerator is a little cold or something's up because the probe is probably not in the right place and it's keeping it a little cooler than it should. So it almost froze, but it seems okay. So let's open it. It's a little hazy, but that's just my fault for having it get too cold. But I can't wait to try it. This is Jay's second all-grain attempt. It's called the Whiplash. And I don't have a recipe right with me, but maybe Jay will chime in or provide a link for this beer on the homebrew, on the 17 Brew Crew forum, if it's there. Ready? Oh, let's give it a crack. So his second all-grain beer. So obviously Jay's been brewing kits and whatnot for a long time. And uh, so I'm excited. Let's give it a pour. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, yeah, a little bit of sediment. Perfect. No problem. I'm going to drink that later. I'm not wasting that precious vitamin D or vitamin E. What is it that yeast gives you? Anyways, it's good for you. So there's the beer. Probably chose the wrong glass. It looks like it's got excellent carbonation. Is there a flashlight around anywhere somewhere? The flashlight I'm going to actually rip apart to get the LEDs out of to fix my sign, my lit, lit up sign. But it uh, works as a beer looker at her too. So there's the beer. Wonderful color. Beautiful stuff. Let's give it a let's give it a sniff. Definitely hot presence there. It's definitely smelling like an IPA right off the bat. No issues there. I love IPA beers. Mmm. Oh, it's got a beautiful grapefruity citrus, you know, Hops, man. Hops. Jay asked me if I'd give him my opinion on this, so that's what I'm doing here in this video, is just doing an unofficial review of his beer. So he's probably watching this right now, crapping his pants. <laughs> this is uh, this is smelling like a great beer, man. It smells beautiful. Now, Jay's an excellent home brewer. He's a great brewer. Every beer he's ever brought me that he's made has been stellar beer. He's, he's a great brewer. So he's obviously got it down, no matter what method he uses to brew his beer. 
be it all grain or kits or whatever, he's always got a great product that I've ever tasted. Anyway, I'm sure everyone, you know, makes mistakes, but let's give this a whirl. Cheers, Jay. Thanks, man. Thanks for having these dropped off. Um, let's give it a whirl. Cheers. Dude, man. Jay, man. Oh, man, 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 man. I thought maybe I'd just sit here and, you know, drink some of it and tell him, you know, it's good beer and he should keep up the good work, but this isn't even a league, um, it's not even in that league. This is above that. This is a very good beer. Um, Jay needs to provide us the recipe to this somewhere, somehow, um, if, he, if he feels, you know, obliged, because that is an IPA from the gods. It's just awesome. You know, it's got that perfect... I wish my son was awake. He really has gotten into these. It's got the perfect balance between the bitterness and the hop layers. And it's not just... I think there's a, there more than two hop additions, or must be, because there's such a depth in the hop flavor um, that I, it's almost like, you know, you can kind of taste the different stages of the, the bitterness going on. The, the initial one, then the, maybe, maybe he did a 15-minute addition and a 5-minute... I don't know. I don't know. I'm just guessing kudos to me if I'm right, <laughs> you know, um, but it's just, um, it's an awesome tasting IPA, uh, so this, uh, what's he call it, the Whiplash, I would think that that name is quite appropriate, seriously, because it's, uh, it's quite an IPA, it's quite a hoppy beer, but the hops aren't so strong that it tastes like you're sucking on a lemon, it, it really does balance out quite, quite well, man, Jay, He's done it again, man. He's done it again. Well, I'm going to enjoy the rest of this beer throughout the rest of this video, which I absolutely, absolutely have no idea. I'm always starting to catch a buzz. Um, absolutely have no um, idea what I'm going to talk about. Um, this is my first beer of the night, so I'm not, you know, half trashed or anything like that. Um, and it's already providing me a bit of a buzz. The hops, the hops are awesome. I love hops because hops, they, um, they relax you. They, um, they help you sleep. They're a natural, you know, a natural supplement for anxiety, um, nervousness, tension, um, fatigue. They just make you feel so relaxed. And then you mix that with the alcohol <sighs> that's in with the beer and the carbonation, which you, I just demonstrated. I have back here, um, ready to go, is a wine that I'm going to brew. Just a simple kit. Oh, that's the other thing. Last week I said I was going to brew a batch of beer, and then I ran out of memory on my camera. So I said I would brew, brew it this week. I, um, I didn't get out to get it. I didn't get out. It was just a little short. The end of the month, okay? So a little short on cash. So I didn't get out to get the ingredients to do it. So um, I'm just going to brew some wine, and I'm not going to do it on camera because it's pretty boring. Um, add water to this stuff, put this powder in, and top it up, put the lid on, airlock, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's pretty simple. But um, so that's what's happening. And behind it, you can't see it, but it's there's a um, another IPA back there that I brewed myself, which is probably just about ready to go into a keg. I was going to dry hop it, but I'm out of beer. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just, I'm, I may put some hops in the keg. You know, that's probably what I'll do is I'll just dry hop it in the keg. Um, we'll see. Uh, when I keg it, I will taste it to see if it needs any more hops. And if it does, then I'll throw some in the keg. Um, it's not going to be as good as this thing, though, because this is obviously, and don't forget, this is an all-grain beer, too. So for a second attempt... You know, actually, I forgot about that when I was critiquing this. For the guy's second attempt at all-grain, I mean, my first all-grain beer a few years ago was was pretty darn good. I mean, I there's a video somewhere of me tasting it and brewing it as well, um, this all-grain batch I did years ago when I got the, the finally got the, the mash tun. I liked it. It was delicious. It was probably one of the better beers I ever brewed. So all-grain is not hard. 
It's not hard to do. It's not. It shouldn't be intimidating. Um, it's just that, as I, you've always heard me say, um, don't fret if you haven't got the space or the means to do it. You're not failing if you're not doing all grain beer. That's what the thing is. You're just brewing what you can, what you can brew, what you feel comfortable with brewing. Um, but this, this here, um, his second attempt at all grain, uh, I say he's got some methods down. Okay, I've always praised Jay for his, uh, for his brewing because everything he's ever brought me has been very, very good. So, um, you know, the guys, you know, hate to, you know, butter people up and stuff like that and embarrass people, but he's got it down. So, um, you guys in the 17 Brew Crew only wish you could taste this. Um, although you might be able to do it if he gives us, us the recipe, and I'm sure it's around. I just don't have it myself. Um... But um, I'll, I would love to brew this. I would love to do an extract version of, just to, of this to see if it's as good. If I had to, people have asked me if you, could, if you could go and live on a deserted desert island for the rest of your life, just live out your, the rest of your life with palm trees and coconuts and pineapples and nature and the beach and sleeping on a hammock and you had an endless supply of beer, but only one type of beer, what would it be? IPA, without the shadow of a doubt. And if this was the beer that I was drinking for the rest of my life on a desert island, or on an island, not a desert island, that would be horrible, an island, uh, uh, there'd be no complaints here if this was the actual beer. If they put a pipe from Jay's house all the way to the island underground, you know, just have a little carbonation system at the very end so when it comes into my my tree wherever it comes up through the ground I can just tap it right into a glass and it's carbonated that'd be perfect <laughs> cheers again if I finish this before the end of this video I might have something else of his to try in fact I think I will so I'll just give us a few minutes and we'll we'll try that too it's a it's a, a apple an apple honey mead or just a what we'd call a melomel which is mead with fruit I guess um, anyway an apple mead so I'm really enjoying the way this space is right now, back here. Um, of course, it's still trashed. It's still a basement, but whatever. It has everything I need. Um, I've got a, a quad-core computer right now here, which I just refurbished, running um, a Cakewalk Sonar Producer 8.5, which is a DAW, a digital audio workstation. And I have, um, as you can, you know, I was just explained earlier, I've got stuff hooked up, got my keyboard over here. And I'm recording, so it's really cool. And then once this is done, I can clean all this up and, you know, do something else back here. Maybe some cartwheels or periwets or something like that. <laughs> periwets or whatever. It's just there's so much space that more than you're used to be. So it's nice to have the ability to come over. Actually, um, earlier I, I have this old tape recorder that I used when I was young, uh, when I was a teenager. I used to use it to record my music, um, my own music. And it's a four-track cassette recorder. And it was broken for so long. And I finally, you know, brought it over here, plopped it down on my bench, took it all apart and repaired it. And now it works again. Now, I don't know if I'll ever, what I'll use it for, but at least I know that my old recording studio, which fit in a closet, um, still works. So, hey, you never know. Might have some fun with it one day. Cheers. Okay. I'm not going to wash that. I'm going to get the other bottle, and I have to make sure it's the right one. I think it's number four. Number four. They are, he's got them numbered. Let me just go over here. Grab number four. Here it is. Number four. Four. Number four. Um, this, yeah, he says this might be interesting. Look, that's pretty clear, eh? Um, so this is the, the mead, the apple um, mead that he made. And what he did was he was making the apple mead. He mixed some apple juice and some honey together, took some of the yeast from that brew when he finished brewing it or bottling it, and pitched it into this and made it the yeast that fermented out this mead. So I'm curious. So since we, we don't really have much else to talk about this week, 
Let's open Jay's mead. Make sure, yes. Clean glass, right? Good enough. Oh, so he's, you know, this is an experiment that he's done. I don't know if it's carbonated or... Yeah, it must be because it's got sediment in the bottom there. Of course, that doesn't mean it's carbonated, does it? There, we'll stop there. Yeah, it looks like it's finely carbonated. Not finely, but finely. If that's a different word, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, let's... Okay, let's just see what we've got. Hmm... Smell the sweetness of the apples, or that could be the sweetness from the honey. It smells like like a fruit cake. Yeah, like a fruit cake. Cheers again, uh, Jay. He's got a spotlight on here today for sure. But hey, I love tasting his beers. They're good stuff. This is the the uh, not a beer, but let's give this a whirl. Gosh darn it, Jay. You did it again. <laughs> it's lightly carbonated. Whoops. Um, oh, it's turned off. And it's pleasantly sweet. I'm going to sound like a broken record. And I, I didn't mean for this to happen. I should have done this on a different video or something. This is better than any wine cooler or vodka cooler I ever, I've ever tasted. So... I mean, I, I, listen, guys, I've been on YouTube for 10 years. I didn't get, you know, to where I am now, wherever that is, by lying to people and by making stuff up. Some people might think I do that, but I really don't, honestly. Um, and I'm, I've come to a, a point here where I'm tasting this product and I just tasted his beer and that's gone. It was fantastic. And now... This product here is just as good as the beer was. Jay needs to send me a bad beer so that I can prove my honesty <laughs> that I will not call a, something good that's not. I mean, I'm not just some lush that will drink bloody, you know, mouthwash or anything like that. That is something I would like to make. I wonder how long this took. Um, but I just remembered I have to be kind of careful with it because it's 10% alcohol. So I think I'll put it over there for a little while. Um, yes, it is 10% and I just started noticing that now. Whew. All right, so um, what else is going on? I just put a video out on my vinyl channel a few days ago. Uh, it's Vinyl TV. I'll put a link down below. And it's um, a little bit of a... Craig's workbench kind of style video. Um, did a bit of a um, autopsy, or should I say lobotomy or whatever, on my turntable. Um, removed um, part of the electronics uh, in there to improve the audio, if you can believe that. Um, so, yeah, that's on my vinyl channel. If you want to see me soldering and re rewiring this turntable, and please go over there and, and watch that video and subscribe if, if you're interested in seeing me do other things than brewing. Because you know what? Brewing beer is great. Tasting beer is great. But I have many other things that I do in my life, as you can see. I mean, I'm not just some guy who stands here and drinks and brews all day and all night long. I have other things that I love to do. And if you're interested in seeing those things or hearing about them, then best you subscribe to my other YouTube channels. One of them being the Vinyl TV channel. And the other one being my Craig Talk channel, which has been long abandoned and going to be brought back to life within the next week or so. Because I have a lot of opinions. Disclaimer, that channel can be very controversial and it, it's not the normal smooth, you know, just keeping things, you know, kind of on level like this channel is. It would be more of a channel where you'll hear me talk about things that you might not agree with. This is my Craig Talk channel. Um, or you, you might just have a different opinion than I do. And that's fine. I am seriously rambling. I am seriously catching a buzz off this thing. And I seriously need to get the freak out of here. So, Cheers, guys. 17. Um, thank you for buying shorts. I really appreciate it. TGTshirts.com. I'm out. Thank you, guys. Cheers. Be safe. See ya. Bye.
trying to stand up now. <laughs> Jeez.